Hello, Dr. Coker here, and this is a guide to Castrum Fluminus, where you'll encounter Tsukuyomi. Unfortunately, Yatsuyu is mean again. Please like and subscribe, I'm releasing guides for every story dungeon and trial in the game, so you always know what's coming. Let's get started. This fight is a bit challenging, but let's break it down mechanic by mechanic. She typically opens with Torment Unto Death. This is a quick frontal conal attack. The tank should face her away from the group at all times, so no one should be hit by this one except the tank. Sahiki Asobi is one she will cast a few times throughout the fight, where yellow fans fall onto the arena. The first fan will fall in the center, and the rest will fall around the perimeter. You'll need to run where the last fan is headed and pause for a bit. They will begin to explode in the order they spawned, so as soon as the center one goes off, run there to wait out the rest of them. Sometimes this ability occurs without showing up on her cast bar, but it's still easy to spot by the big yellow fans. She will also cast Nightfall, but this literally does nothing. It just means she's about to cast something else at random. Steel of the Underworld is another frontal cone, so again, stay away from her front if you're not the tank. Reprimand deals unavoidable damage to all players, just heal through it. Midnight Haze is one where two adds spawn that slowly creep toward each other. Just kill them quickly before they meet and before their casts finish. Lead of the Underworld is a line stack. The line stack marker looks like the normal stack marker, except there are a few of them in a line. This just means players need to line up behind the marked player. On top of the player actually works too. When she casts Nightbloom, all players take heavy damage and a lengthy stun as Phase 2 begins. In Phase 2, there will be a Suffering Gauge. At the end of the phase, there will be another Nightbloom which deals damage based on how full this meter is. At 100%, it's a wipe. Phase 2 is nothing but adds, so you essentially just want to burn all of them as quickly as you can so the Suffering Gauge doesn't get too high. Then you'll see the second Nightbloom and enter Phase 3. In Phase 3, the fight becomes more challenging. It's like Phase 1, but with some complications. First off, she'll cast Selenomancy, which splits the arena in half, a dark side and a light side. Standing in either gives you a stacking debuff, and you'll want to switch sides about every 3 to 4 stacks. This will remove the debuff you have and give you the other one. If you take too long, say around 5 stacks, you will receive Doom which automatically kills you after a short time. Simultaneously with Selenomancy, you'll see Donut AoEs appear on the floor. Try to avoid those as you switch sides. When she casts Anti-Twilight or Paraloon, everyone takes some damage and Selenomancy ends. There's no real difference between Anti-Twilight and Paraloon by the way. Lunacy is a new spell for Phase 3 that puts a stack marker on one player, but everyone needs to stay stacked for several seconds as it blasts repeated damage. Dark Blade is one where slightly more than half the floor is marked, and then she swings. You have to move fast, this one has a brief marker. Those are all the mechanics, but the real challenge in this fight is the overlapping mechanics that often put you in the situation where you have to take one hit or another. As that happens a time or two you will be okay, just don't let multiple mechanics strike you at the same time, or don't avoid mechanics where the group needs you, like a stack marker. And that's it for Kestrum Fluminous. Good luck, have fun, and see you next time.